Hi, PJ Scott here, your Navy Waves veteran with another edition of Veterans Forum. And last month we had a cliffhanger, so we need to finish up with Seaman First Class Jack Eusen of the USS Samuel B. Roberts, the destroyer that fought like a battleship during our World War II. Jack, thank you for coming back because we really left folks with a cliffhanger. We discussed how you were 15 when Pearl Harbor happened and you graduated from high school. You signed up at 17. You got on a brand new ship, the right. USS Samuel B. Roberts. It went to the Atlantic. Interesting, it got hit by a whale. I couldn't help but think about Gregory <laughs> Peck when we were talking about that. And then you got shuttled through the Panama Canal, and you became a you and your shipmates became Pacific sailors fighting the Japanese. Now, folks, when we left off, we were just going to get in one huge battle: the U.S. forces and the Japanese forces. Were there any British that were there? No. So it was strictly United States force. Right. Okay, and humongous fleet of ships. Can you review that again for us? Well, the Japanese had a plan to uh, invade the, uh, stop the uh, uh, General MacArthur and his army from taking back the Philippines from the Japanese. Right. And their plan was uh, very unique. Of course, mm -hmm. they, uh, they sent their whole fleet, that what was left of it, mm -hmm. from, uh, to uh, attack on the three-prong attack. Now, this was in 1944. 1944. Okay, October? October 20th is when. Okay. Is, was when the date when he landed his soldiers on the beaches at Leyte Gulf. Okay. The okay. island of Leyte. Right. 250,000 soldiers. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> Samuel B. Roberts was assigned to a task unit, 77.4.3. Uh, uh, known as Tappy 3. Uh, we were 70, 80 miles off the beaches, 45 miles off land, and we were escorting our, our aircraft carriers. And uh, their planes on these carriers were used to strafe the beaches right. and to also strafe the uh, airfields in Leyte and Samar uh -huh, uh -huh. to help uh, his soldiers get a, foot, a foothold. Right, right. And this went on for about uh, three days. We didn't... Uh, we didn't uh, Roberts, we didn't do anything. There was no submarines attacking. There was uh -huh. no aircraft in it. Uh -huh. All we had to do is, uh, some, uh, in those three days, we had to pick up pilots who came back to their aircraft carrier if they went into the deep. I see. If they were, you know, half shot away or what. Right. And we, it was our job to pick up the pilots and right. the crews. Uh -huh. and that, that's what we were doing. Uh -huh. So there was no action for us. And, and on behalf of the, our flyboys, Thank you very much for picking them up. Yes, we picked up two, <laughs> yeah. two yeah. different guys right. and got them back to their ship. I'm sure their mothers were very grateful. <laughs> <laughs> they were pretty good guys. Uh -huh. Those pilots were uh, unbelievable. All of the best pilots are Navy pilots. To have to land on a little strip on an aircraft carrier, right. you got to be good. Yeah. Well, the, the evening of the 24th of October, um, I was on watch. I had the 12... Midnight to four in the morning, and we were watching the skies, and it seems like that we we were hearing rumbling and lightning in the in the skies, but that wasn't that wasn't a storm. We were listening and seeing the Japanese fleet trying to get into Surigawa Strait to come into Leyte. Mm -hmm. Four battleships, cruisers, destroyers, and our battle line was there. Oh, okay. With the old the old battleships of. Uh, Pearl Harbor. So this was a gathering and, of battles of battles. Then. Well, we, yeah, of course, we, we learned from our bridge that uh, there's a big battle going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, with our battleships there, the older battleships in World War II, you know, uh, right. was at Pearl Harbor. Right. They really sunk that fleet, and they couldn't get through. Oh, uh-huh. And uh, we didn't know what was coming for us. Right. And... Uh, <clears throat> About 7 o'clock in the morning, we had general quarters, man your battle stations. This now, is were you already awake or had you gone back to your I went bunk? back. I was sleeping. Because you got 
off at four right. for your watch. Right. Okay. So okay. So uh, <clears throat> I heard the uh, you know the alarm. Mm -hmm. Got out. Got get ready and grabbed my life jacket and ran up topside. Mm -hmm. And uh, we I was uh, I was on a forty millimeter gun forward. Okay. That was my job. Right. And we uh, we heard we heard an order from our gun captain. Take off the sleeves, or I believe this is this is for real. Right. Load. Right. And then uh, did you have time to think about? No, I wasn't thinking about anything. Yeah, yeah. Just he, just moving along. You right, know. right. That that's good training. You don't take time to think. You well, might freak. Do what you need to the do. The next thing that happened, I'll <coughs> tell you that we we took t time to think. Oh, okay. My captain got on the on the uh, loudspeaker of the of the ship, and he said, J uh, "Men." There's a Japanese fleet coming through San Bernardino Strait. Battleships and cruisers and destroyers. Mm -hmm. Four major battleships. One of them being the Yamato, uh -huh. the largest in the world at the time, with right. 18 inch guns. 11 heavy cruisers mm -hmm. and about 17 destroyers. They're coming, da they, they're coming out of San, Bernard San Bernardino Strait and heading for us we will do our job, the outcome is very doubtful. So this look, I, We were looking, I, I was 18 years old. Right. And we're looking at each other and says, what does he mean by that? The outfield, you know, and we were thinking about it. But all of a sudden we heard like rumbling, hum, hum. Mm -hmm. That was the battleships opening up at 18 miles away. Mm. It's like, uh, that would be like for me, uh, from here to, uh, from Bellevue to SeaTac. Right, right. And uh, we knew, boy, oh boy, this is, we're going to, our gun captain said, we're outgunned. Uh -huh. We only had two five-inch guns. So now you're having a realization of what the captain meant when he said it looked doubtful. Right. Okay. And they were coming strong now, and uh, you could see them on the horizon. Mm -hmm. We could see the big, uh, the Japanese had what they call p uh, pagoda mass. You could see them, you know. Okay. And uh, we noticed sh ships coming on the outside. These were the cruisers coming. Uh -huh. The heavy cruisers coming very fast. Uh-huh. And uh, uh, we waiting. In the meantime, shells are coming all around us. Oh, okay. Dropping in the water and splashing. Uh-huh. And uh, finally, our, our admiral uh, said, small boys, meaning the destroyers. Uh-huh. We had, we had three heavy destroyers, Johnston, Hull, and Roberts, I mean, uh, and, uh, and um, Herman, okay. and four destroyer escorts, mm -hmm. Samuel B. Roberts being one of them. Okay. And uh, the, the, the word got out the Admiral, we should lay smoke, smoke screens, okay. around the carriers. Right. So the Japanese uh, would have a trouble hitting it. So to make it really crystal clear to our viewers, you are defending our aircraft carriers with your very life. That's, That's right. what it was all about. That's right. Okay. And uh, we were doing that for about 20 minutes, or maybe 15 minutes, when uh, the cruisers were coming in now and, and scoring some hits mm -hmm. on our ships and on the, on the uh, uh, aircraft carriers. Oh, oh, okay. okay. So, so we're in full. Yeah. We're done with warming up. Yeah, we're we here. haven't even shot our guns because <laughs> they were too okay. far away. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean... Right. And I couldn't use, we couldn't use my, fill, uh, my right. 40 millimeter, there was no airplanes. Right, okay. So we were just standing there waiting. Mm -hmm. And uh, by God, when the next order game, Admiral Sprague figured that we got to get, first of all, he, he, he pushed his carries into the wind to get off the rest of the planes that were on there. Mm -hmm. Most of the planes were out strafing the beaches already. Right, right. Because this is now about 7, 10 in the morning. Okay. And the next order he gave, small boys, attack. Uh-huh. Which means turn around and head right for them with our torpedoes. Mm-hmm. And that's how we got into this big, big battle. Uh-huh. And we were started out, and boy, those guys were shooting at us, and the, the shells just were coming right, right over our heads. Right. And, um... Uh, and you were on a brand new ship, so did you have confidence that you had all the latest weaponry? Oh, yeah, we were weaponry? ready. We were ready. <laughs> okay, this was not some mothballed ship. This no, is a brand we new ship. Brand new ship. Mm -hmm. I told you in the, uh, uh, we sunk a submarine on the way to the Marshall Islands, uh -huh. Japanese submarine. That's the only action we had so far. Uh huh. But uh, we were ready. 
-hmm. We trained all the way from Boston to Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. My Captain Copeland trained us night and day, seven days a week. And thank God he did. And when we were ready. And now uh, we were picking off, the, the three destroyers were in front of us, and they were picking off cruisers. And we were behind. The other three DEs were on the other, on the, on the other side of the carriers. They were still laying smoke. The only ones that, the only one that was in line with the big destroyers was my ship. Uh -huh. And my captain picked out a, a, uh, a heavy cruiser, the Chikuma. Uh -huh. And when I, you know, I'm, I told you I was in the 40 millimeter right. forward. Right. So, right. right below me is the five inch gun, and the bridge is right behind me. Uh -huh. And I had a, it was like sitting in at home plate in the baseball game. Okay. I'm not doing anything because right. we not we have no airplanes to fight at. Right. 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 And I'm just watching. Right. And I see I see the 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 uh, heavy cruiser that he's going down on on the the uh, the uh, Japanese uh, ch uh, Chikuma. Um, I could see his turrets turning right toward my eyes. You get because we were about ten thousand yards. <laughs> oh God. And they opened fire, and the shells came right over our gun. Uh huh. And uh, we fired our three torpedoes, uh -huh. and we sunk, we blew his stern off. Okay. So he was through. Good. He was sinking. Good. Good. Somebody came, uh, another cruiser came toward that ship, and the ship blew up and destroyed the other one. Okay, so it was another Japanese cruiser. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. So that was, that, that <laughs> yeah. was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. And um, you must have been, were you feeling kind of jubilant oh, or just yeah. all we, this mixed emotions? We were <laughs> saying, hey, why do you hit him good? That bad? You know, <laughs> yeah, like right, we right. were, like it was a, like a baseball game, right, not really right. knowing this is real combat. Right, right, yes. And where, where I, when, when I saw the difference was uh -huh. a few minutes later uh -huh. when we, uh, as soon as we fired, uh -huh. the story goes that uh, uh, Captain Copeland called down to his engineering officer Mm -hmm. Saying Trowbridge, give me all you got. After I turn, after I make my, after we fire, you give me all you got. Don't worry about the revolutions right. because we're not going to use them again. Oh, okay. That's another time when we start looking at each other. What does he mean by that? Well, he knew. So yeah. He knew that we we're going to get hit. Right, right. And uh, we turned out. We ran into a rain squall. Mm. So a lot of rain in the Pacific, you know. Right. And just, you know, you come, I, we came out of the squall. We almost collided with one of the heavy destroyers, the hull, H-O-E-L. Uh -huh. uh -huh. and, and when I say maybe 60 yards away, so we turned, and, I, and we looked at that ship, and it didn't look like a destroyer. Uh -huh. The bridge was gone. One of the five-inch turrets was gone. And you could see from the bridge aft, just steel. Uh, Mangled. Look at that. My right. God, it doesn't even look like a ship anymore. Right, you know? right. And I said, oh, boy, this is for... Then I said, oh, boy, this is for real. We, right. we, we're we right. in a fight to the finish. So you're dealing with this battle in a squall all at once? Yep. Good Lord. Well, squalls, the cloud comes over you, it'll rain, yeah, and they go away. Yeah, you know? well, still, I'd be calling on my garden angels in maximum force. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, in the whole, I, I couldn't believe it. Uh -huh. And... Uh, we, now, we were getting in close, and they're getting close to us, and now we, we start firing with our two guns. Mm -hmm. One back aft, one forward, five-inch guns. And we were against 18, 14, eight-inch shells, and, the, and they're, they're destroyers who have torpedoes. Right. Okay? Right, right, right. And uh, we started to get in close. Me and I'm one, uh, and about... About five minutes after we uh, turned out of our torpedo run, uh -huh. I heard a, it was a big jog or a big jolt on our ship. I said, someone said we got hit back aft. That's what I was wondering. And uh, it was a salvo of, uh, of six eight-inch shells that hit back 40 millimeter back aft, like mine, my gun up okay. here, okay. back aft. And uh, our gun captain said, 42 is gone on, his, on, the, you know, on the radio. Right, right. Uh, what do you mean? It's gone, it evaporated. Uh huh. When those shells hit, when the smoke cleared, there was no gun mount, there was nothing. Mm 
-hmm. Half the torpedo tubes were already gone. Was there a loss of life at that? Everybody died. Yeah. And they right. they were uh, they didn't know what hit them. Right. They just, right. Just a single, you know, gun. Right. Right. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Right. Meantime, this gun is going off in front of me every yeah. six or seven seconds. And when that blast come back to us, boy, it was mind-boggling. Uh huh. Well, this was going on for quite a while now, and. Uh, uh, our gun, cap, our, our gun captain, let me tell you about the gun in front of me. Uh -huh. He shot in the time before we got sunk, he shot 275 rounds of five inch shells. Oh, wow. The guy back there. He was aft, busy. Paul Carr, our gunner's mate back aft, gun captain back there, fired 325 shells in a, at a period of about 40 minutes. Well, you know, I guess if you kind of sense that you're going down, you 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 got to fight to the finish. This is a fight to the finish. That's that's right. And right. Uh, we were getting hits. Mm -hmm. We were so close. They couldn't get those big ripe uh, the Japanese eight-inch shell. Uh, um, uh, couldn't get their main batteries down. We were so small. Oh, okay. That's why the shells were were coming over. See. Okay, and, so but, this but, is so, kind of like that historical event where England beat out the Spanish Armada because they were so big and cumbersome and the British fleet was small and maneuverable. Sounds like kind of the same scenario the, uh, to some extent. Um, the firing of our, in other words, a five-inch shell from one of our guns uh -huh. would bounce off a, a hull, the hull of the ship, right. the cruisers. Uh -huh. So our two gun captains were aiming for their uh, there are there are there are turrets, right? The exposed gun gun emplacements, right, right? And the bridge, make them count. And we were getting hits all over the place. Mm -hmm. And boy, I'm telling you, they, uh, the, the 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 blast coming back to us. It's half the time I was out of it, you know. Right. It, it was it was unbelievable. I imagine some people had hearing loss because of yep. that. Well, yeah. Uh, we took another hit back aft. We could feel it. And another hit. So somebody <laughs> was aiming back. Nothing up front. Uh -huh. We took a shell from somewhere, threw the, an eight-inch shell through our bow. It went in from the port into the ship, out to the uh, starboard, where they're supposed, to, they're supposed to blow up inside the ship. Right. But they go right through. It's very, uh, the destroyer is very thin. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And they came right out of the water. Boom. <laughs> we went down. Boy, it was fun. At that time, we see another another uh, destroyer, one of ours, Johnston. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Ernest Evans. Okay. The captain. He's the guy that started the torpedo runs, and we, uh, you couldn't tell it was a ship anymore. Mm. And as we came by him, they were they were sl they they slowed down because they they took a lot of hits in the engine right. rooms and everything, and we I, we could see it. Look who look who's on the tail. That's, mm -hmm. that's Captain Evans, and his bridge was gone. Was the ship sinking? Well, he, it was slow, you know. He, right. But his, um, his bridge was gone. Uh-huh. He, he had no clothes on. Oh, Lord. And he, was, he ran back to after steering. They call it after steering, the back end of the ship. Uh-huh. If your bridge is gone, well, you couldn't steer. Right. You can steer it after steering. The guys with cables, and they move the cables. Uh-huh. And he was giving, he was giving them orders. And yelling, and he was, you could see his shirt was all off and everything. And as he came by us, or we came by him, uh -huh. he looked up like this, and he, because he knew Copeland, my captain. Right. And he saluted him as he, as he went by. I said, look, he's saluting us. Wow, what a moment in history. And of course, when his ship sank, he went down with the ship. Oh, God. So, okay. so now we see our... Two of our main destroyers completely wiped out, uh -huh. and we're getting hit back aft. Man, I really didn't know. Uh -huh. I was telling you about the guy back aft, Paul Henry Carr. He was the gun captain. He's from Oklahoma. Uh huh. He was a good friend of mine. Good. He was he was a good shipmate. Good. We knew each other. Right. And uh, he fired uh, just about maybe five minutes later. A Japanese 14-inch shell hit our ship aft, but it hit on the water. 
if, if, it, if it was a little higher, hitting into our hull, he would have split us right in half. Oh, gee. But he hit us on the waterline, an explosion, but it was right under his gun. So in that, in that terrible uh, explosion, he lost the gas injection system on his gun that he was using. Oh, okay. Gas ejection is when you fire a five-inch shell in the breech, put it in the breech, you put a powder bag behind it. Right. And when you, when you fire, that powder bag turns into gas. Okay. They suck it out through, a, through an area. So then, in other words, that gun mount was done. Well, it, it was very dangerous. Uh-huh. Because with black powder, if you can't get that gas out, Oh, have I see. A you spark. could end up just blowing yourself up. So he okay. uh, he fired six more rounds, knowing that could cook off. The seventh round cooked off mm -hmm. and blew the mount apart. Apart. You're right. And uh, two uh, two men got to the uh, to the mount. Uh huh. And uh, they looked in, and it was you know there was Paul Henry Carr on his knees. Holding a 45-pound projectile and trying to put it into the man, the, the uh, breech, which was mangled. Mm. And uh, they they came in there and they took it from his hand. Of course, another guy was moaning. Uh huh. So they took the, the the projectile from his hand, laid it down, and they dragged out the other guy. They came back in, and there was Paul again. He picked up that shell again, and he was ripped open from his neck to his spleen. Oh, he was really determined. Everything was falling out. Oh. But he said, I want to get another, another round off to the, uh, to the Japs. Right. And they took it away from him again and brought him out on the deck, and he died. He died. Oh, gosh. And for that action, Paul Henry Carr was given the Navy Cross, okay. and a ship was named after him in our fleet today. Oh, he Guided okay. missile frigate. Oh, okay. FFG 5052 USS Carr. Okay. There's a little Navy history for you. Well, right. soon after that, that's me. Mm -hmm. Soon after that, abandoned ship, the captain. Mm -hmm. Abandoned ship, mm -hmm. abandoned ship, every man for himself. Right. And that's when I knew, wow, this is for real. Right, right. All my... One of my buddies there put uh, in my gun, he says, Jack, I'll cut down this raft, that's my job. Go over to port side, get down there and wait for me. Uh -huh. When it goes in the water, you jump in and grab it, right. I'll be right down. Right. I, that's what I did. Right. Well, everybody's going off the, the starboard side, that's the high side. Right. I was all by myself. And I, I, I can imagine I must have been a lot of, could one say pandemonium? I mean, you're, the ship's sinking. You got to get off, and you got to get off now. There must yeah. have been a lot of. And uh, but I had a. He's a seaman first, like I am, and he gave me an order. Mm -hmm. You bet. We're working right. together. Right. Follow me. Right. And uh, waiting, waiting. Finally, some guy comes by me from the, from the stern, walks right by me, no shoulder, no arm. He's walking up to the bow. Finally, I said, "I better jump in. Something, something must happen to Bud." Uh -huh. So when I jumped in, another another kid jumped in after me. Cook, he was a cook. Uh huh. And we made our way around the ship. Oil, the oil, the oil was there, you know, firing. Uh -huh. And we looked up at Carr's gun. I said, "Look at Carr's gun, my God." Uh huh. And uh, we saw the guys over there, in, in the rafts, uh -huh. and the, and the nets, and that's where we went to. Uh huh. Now, did you? I was told. In in boot camp to swim as far away from that cheap yeah, ship get away. as possible because you, you don't want to get sucked. Well, let, me, uh, let me tell you quickly what, what the end was. The end was that they forgot about it, that they forgot about the three, the three uh, destroyers that were sunk in the water. They forgot uh -huh. about us. Uh -huh. They picked up all the guys from the two aircraft carriers that were sunk. Uh -huh. But they forgot about us. So you were in, because we're coming to a close. Three days. Three days floating. Right. And uh, for those of you who would like to watch uh, Jack's story, again, you were a guest on that World War II HD on the History Channel, and it was there that I realized there was more involved than just merely floating in the water. You had to deal with sharks. Oh. So we're not going to go there. You can watch that on the history channel. We lost a lot of guys to, to the yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. 
So to wrap up, you're here, married, kids. How, tell the audience how long have you and your wife been married now? We, I'll be, uh, January 9th will be 62 years. Well, congratulations, Jack. We're glad you made it. Let me it. tell you what I did. I told him in the water when that shark was pushing on me and he left me. I said, God, get him away from me. Get him, I'll go home and I'll find a nice girl and get married. Right. And that's what I did. I found a nice girl in Oklahoma. Good for you. Good for you. Listen, Jack, we appreciate you and your shipmates dead or alive on the Samuel B. Roberts and those other destroys because that was a vital battle against the Japanese. There, there, there was no more Japanese fleet after that fight. Well, hallelujah. Thank you for asking me here. I Thank really appreciate you. it. Thank you. This is PJ Scott. We're still at war. Remember to pray for those in harm's way. Take care of yourselves. <laughs> <laughs>